Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Purple and welcome back to another video for our uh, Mushroom Forging again. Today we are back out in Lock Key again, we're actually pretty deep in Lock Key at the moment. Uh, we went to a tour before, before we came here just to see what was there and it wasn't really that interesting but we did find two mushrooms from there that were of interest. But anyway, we were walking down because we were planning on going to an area that I don't really remember but it seems to be like a pine forest or something. But anyway, we found this on the way, and this is uh, quite an important find. I believe I found this a long time ago, but I didn't really know what it was. This is Hen of the Woods, I believe. Um, yeah, this... I, a lot of foragers have probably heard of this mushroom before. And it grows in big clusters like this, where they're like, uh... These little flaps that you see. There's a mushroom called Chicken of the Woods, and it kind of reminds me of that, but the Hen of the Woods is kind of a... Uh, a brown version, and it's a bit different. But yeah, uh, we have some other mushrooms over here. I don't know what they are to, to uh, I think they're probably dying or something. But we're gonna cut off um, probably this part here since I'm just gonna take a bit. Yeah, let's see. Okay, there we go. This is a. Uh, I got the cluster here. So as you can see, it's a polypore. It's got pores underneath the caps, and it's got these nice brown uh, caps on them and they grow a little bit weird like leaves which is uh, a bit interesting oh. but anyway we're gonna take this home and um, I haven't tried it yet so uh, oh, also there's two other mushrooms we found down here I believe this is the um, some kind of milk cap what is it called again? I forgot the name anyway <laughs> this one uh, reminds me of a mushroom called plums and custard I don't think this is it, but it looks very like it. I believe plums and custard was a ball eat or something. No, I never really looked into that mushroom, so I'm not really sure. But anyway, we got hen in the woods, and that's pretty much a nice find for today so far. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're going to be continuing off in that direction and uh, see what we find next. So yeah, let's see you there. Alright, so I'm also going to mention that this video is only going to contain clips from different days as well. So yesterday, uh, some of the clips that you've seen were from yesterday and stuff. But now we are in uh, Schlieffbahn, we're back in the same forest as before. And we've been knowing something for quite a while now. And that is that, uh, of course, the famous mushroom, Bolitis edulis, actually grows in this forest. And there's two big ones right around here. So here is a slightly more mature one there are baby ones all around here but this is a, a really nice one so I guess we're gonna see if we can uh, get up and you can see these guys grow to big sizes you can probably just wiggle them out there yeah, there we go there we go all right so I'm gonna say a few things about this mushroom first of all as you can see it has pores instead of gills I don't know if you can see that right but there's like white pores. The cap is very white and yellowy, kind of when it's young. And the stem is very fat. Uh, it's got a smooth cap. It can be slimy when it's wet. And there's also something else you need to know about this mushroom as well. So I don't know if I can make a big up, but around the stem here, just around where the cap uh, kind of lifts off. There is a netting effect called reticulation, I believe. Just that uh, it's right here, you can kind of see. And this will spread across the entire stem as the cap matures and it goes up. So, yeah, this is probably the best of the best that you can get when it comes to mushroom foraging. And luckily, there is another one over there. This one looks a lot better. Okay, let's go around and let's see. This one's like so. Go down. Oh, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, popped out. <clears throat> that is a good one now. This is what you're looking for. You can see the reticulation is more visible. And, uh, yeah. It's got a browner cap. This is, this is what you want to look for right here. It's probably the biggest one we've found in the forest so far. The pores are more mature, cap is browner, more reticulation, bigger stem. It's just, yeah, that's 
Well, yeah, that's some good, that's some good stuff. And actually, you can eat this mushroom raw. You can take a bit off, and you can taste it. Like if I were to nibble right now, it'll have a really nice mushroomy flavor because these are lovely, edible, and cooked. So, I recommend if you want to cook them, fry them with butter. Um, they're really good that way. Or you can just eat them raw. They're good either way. I like to have them raw because it's like the full-on flavor that you can get from them. There are no toxins, there are no poisons that you can get from eating one raw. Like, this is good to chew on because the flavor is just good. And it is uh, quite a healthy mushroom as well. Uh, so, the... There is one lookalike. There's a few lookalikes actually. Um, there is um, what's it called? The bitter bolete. It's well, they're very easy to tell apart because the bitter bolete uh, will kind of go by the taste test thing. So you take a nibble of it, um, you will get a really bitter taste. But if you get a nice mushroomy taste, which is what we're getting here, then it is a bolete essentialis. Um, bolete just has many different names. It can be called the Sep Porcini King Bolete. Uh, over here in the UK, it's called the Penny Bun, and worldwide scientific name is Bolete Sedges. So yeah, very good mushrooms. The best you're going to get out here, and also it's very, very hard stem as you can hear there, and they're just great. And there's a lot, a lot of meat on you yet on this. So yeah, we've been finding them for a while now, but I didn't get to record them, because on that day, when we found a whole bunch of them, uh, they were, weren't as big as this though, um, I wasn't recording, because we wanted to look around and see everything in the forest, so I knew where everything was, and know that around in this part is where Bolita Sedges likes to grow. So we're coming here constantly seeing their growth and how they are, and if they reach this size, then we're going to pick them. So yeah, anyway... I guess uh, I'll see you in our next find. Alright, so we're walking further on, and um, down here we found a younger version of the Bolita Sedulus. So as you can see here, it starts off with a very, very pale cap, and the stem is still quite big at the bottom, as you can see. You'll see them growing like this when they're babies. We're going to leave this one here because we want it to keep growing, but you... We'll cover if, up. Yeah. So, <laughs> But if you want it to last longer, and you want to make sure that this mushroom isn't found by anyone else or any other animals, you can cover it up. Like that. Just make sure it blends in. And then over a day, over a few days, it'll just pop up eventually, and you'll kind of see that. It'll be bigger, though. So you just want to cover it up like that. Maybe not the twig or anything like that. Just like a bit of moss on top of it. Like that. Because if you want to hide it from other foragers and other animals and stuff, then that's a... That's the method that you can use, but also you want to know where it is, or you might just accidentally find it. Since this forest is really not, um, you, you can kind of tell where things are sometimes. So, I don't know if we'll have a problem finding that. But we do know that we're in a bogey area, though, and there is a bottle on the ground there. <laughs> we could use that bottle next time, remember where that bottle was at. The bottle? It'd be a marker to oh, find yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That bottle, if we know that that's there, maybe they'll have it. Uh, well, don't make it, yeah, don't stick it up then, and they might say, Hey, that looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll just have a bottle there, then we'll know. Just like make some kind of marker that doesn't seem too obvious, you know. Yeah, so yeah, we know that we're in an area we might find some more uh, of the uh, King Borley around here, so yeah. Actually, so, I wonder if that bottle is left there as a marker, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe, and we're using it or something. Maybe they, the other people know about it or something. But anyway, so yeah, I'll see you on our next time. Alright, so we were going further and we're going up to this area, but down here, we found another big one. This one's really nice. Seems eating away a bit, but that's alright. I don't really care. It doesn't matter when it comes to, to eating away or not. Okay, what's this? Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ, I've never seen a girl like that before. Oh, that's that's really big. Too bad the bugs got to. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, you can still use it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's you can get a lot of meat from that stem anyway. So there's another the one. Cap. Is there another one over there? Oh, it's the baby though. All right.
But anyway, they That's can grow too. I think it grew like this because there might have been like a branch or something in the way. So I wanted it to go under. So it came up here. But anyway, we're going to uh -huh. add that to here. But also, I want to show something else. I found this. This is called the Peppery Bolit. It is another uh, edible species of the Bolitus genus. And, um, well, this is an edible one, as I said before, but, uh, you can dry it out, and you can, oh, you, as I was saying, you can dry it out, and you can blend it up into a powder to make a spice, because they are very, very spicy. So if I just take a little bite. Yeah, it, then that it kicks off. It's like really spicy. It's like hot chili. So it's a great mushroom if you want to make a spice or anything, or you can just cook it, which I haven't tried before. But um, yeah, uh, some people cook it. I wonder what that tastes like because it's very spicy even when it's raw. But yeah, anyway, we're gonna put this in the basket as well. And this is our basket so far. Doing, having a great day so far. I've been here, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. All right, let's go yeah. before some other people show up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. All right. All right, so we are in a completely different part of the forest, and we found this beauty right here. This thing is the perfect bully essential if we can get it out of the ground here. There we go. Look at that. That is a proper one right there. That's what you're looking for. Jesus. All right, so... It's dangerous. As I said before, it's the best you're going to get when it comes to foraging. Um, a lot of key identifying features that I can now show to you. Number one, fat and bulbous stem that will yellow with age. They are white when they're young. There are, there's reticulation, as I said before, which is a net effect. So if you can see that. Wait for the camera to focus. Yeah, I think you see all that. Oh, never mind. Don't move it. There you go. Oh, it keeps going in and out of focus. Well, it's alright. There's like a... A very webby looking effect on the neb, on the net, net, what am I saying? Um, the stock. So then it gets a little bit smaller as it goes up. White pores that become very, uh, pretty crowded when they're a bit young, but they'll, they'll turn yellow when they'll widen out with age. Uh, okay, there we go. And then, as long as another thing that you're seeing at the edge of the cap, there's a little white, uh, ring thing going on here at the edge of the cap. The cap is really smooth and this is actually a bit slimy it feels because it's uh, actually wet up. I'll just get it off. But there's also bugs on it and stuff as well that will come off later on. It's blowing on it. Okay. So then the cap. It has a very nice brown cap. It starts off very white and yellowish. Then it will turn to a pale brown and then finally a dark brown like this as it ages. So, that's what you want to know about this mushroom. And if you want to be really sure that you have one, one that looks like this, uh, as I said before, give it a taste and it has a really nice mushroomy flavor to it. And um, they're very, to very um, easy to tell apart from a lot of other bolites as well. There is one look like it's uh, called the False King Bolite. And it has a darker stem, I believe, but it has even a darker stem when it's young. So if you see one that's young and has a very nice and bright white stem or something like that, something like this that has this coloration, that means you got yourself a beautiful King Bullet, and you can eat it when you get home because this thing, um, these are great in like Italian recipes and stuff, like the French and Italians use them a lot in uh, like pasta and stuff. There's like many different types that you can get. So uh, I usually just like to fry them or eat them raw, either way. But yeah. Also another thing that I want to show is that usually when you're harvesting King Bully, you want to get the whole thing out of the ground. Because you can just do this with your mushroom knife. Just cut all those maggots and that. So I'm going to cut this and see if it's fine all the way. Eh, I guess. It's still fine though. But usually you'd want to, um, I'm, I was just going that way because there's a lot of stuff going on there. 
If you take one like this, for example, which I already did, uh, there's nothing in it. And what I did is I did this, I just went along and chiseled the side, all of the dirt off. So, yeah. And then, see? Nice, white, clean flesh. And that's what you're looking for. So, yeah, we got a really nice one. What we're going to do with these so ones. Do you want to take them one or cover these ones? Uh, these ones there. These ones are fine to harvest, eh? So, we'll get... I'm thinking... Hmm. Boy, that one's damaged by bugs. They're going to get eaten by bugs anyways. They're not going to survive. Yeah. I might keep that one there, though. I'll get this one, though. Alright. Okay, get this. And we're going to show you what I do. Just if it's not bad. Uh, so, I guess. So, I do this. Oh, what is this? It's like yellow and stuff. What is this? gone now. Just from a bug. Oh. Yeah, you just like chisel off the sides like that. Let's get all the dirt, dirty parts off, and then you got some nice flesh to deal with here. Right. Do I keep that one there? Uh, yeah, we're gonna keep that one there. Cause oh. I don't think people even come around here. Uh, this is like a completely different part, so I can see the secrets. There's all other things around here as well. So we're just gonna leave them. What's of course, they're gonna grow nice and big. No. World of, is that one? No. Uh, some kind of other mushroom. It really looks like a duck from the cow. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. So yeah, I'll uh, we'll see you in our next find if we find any more around here. Alright. So um, we are in a completely different forest. Uh, we're, we're, we just drive up. We didn't drive. But we walked up the road from where the other one is and we found this other one that we were looking into. We were wondering how we get in here. Luckily we found a way and we managed to get in here and this place is bigger and uh, more wider and it's got a lot more green. And just around here we found more of well, the same. So it smells the same. So this is just a nice one that we found here. But also I've been concerned about something else. Because I'm looking at everything in here and there's something different about I think it's this this and this a little spider in there I don't know because there's spiders everywhere here if you can get that there you go oh, there. anyway so as I was saying uh, you can see on this one it's got a little bit of a reddish color to the stem when all the other ones have like a yellowish tint and plus the smells different compared to the other ones like this which have a way more pleasant mushroomy taste this kind of has like a dull kind of taste so i'm thinking maybe this might be the um the one i was talking about the poisonous lookalike which is uh, called the false bolete or the false king bolete but i'll go home and research about it see if this is just another bolete sedulous that it might have something else with it, or that it's actually the um, the false king bolete. So I'm not really sure about this yet, because the other ones seem completely fine, but that one is just like um, it's a little bit strange. I've been noticing. So yeah. All right, so we're gonna be done foraging here for the day, and we're gonna be going to the car, go to the gas station, and that since I haven't had breakfast yet, we're just gonna get sandwiches. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, this part of the forest, it's not right, I'd see it be better during like the summer or something where like chanterelles might come up and stuff. Uh, over the other part though, like those two forests over there, they're just the best so far. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single upload. In my next video of Mushroom Hunter, we will go back into that uh, one forest. And see if there's any more bullets or anything else there that I can show. In my next actual video, I'm not sure it could be, could be gaming or we could do this again. I don't know. Because I'm thinking on uh, doing these foraging videos more often now since it's the season. And you might as well do it while the time is ripe. So yeah. Anyway, this is Purple signing out. I'll see you next video. Bye bye.